In Pakistan, the government continues to ban the NATO supply route into Afghanistan following a deadly attack that killed two dozen Pakistani soldiers. While government leaders negotiate a solution to the deadly U.S. policies in the region, many local workers have found themselves without a job. The NATO shutdown has exposed how the U.S. war machine makes local people dependent on it for wages. Catherine Kopp reads for our reporter in Pakistan who met some of the NATO drivers who are out of work. It's midnight in Karachi. Drivers and helpers who carry NATO supplies to Afghanistan gather to hear music under the open sky. Nearby stands a NATO truck and oil tankers. The melancholy song is about being away from loved ones during celebrations, like the Muslim holiday Eid. The musician sings, I am sad as I am far away from dear ones, so how can it be a happy occasion? Almost all of the people here are from the tribal areas. Transporting NATO supplies is the main source of income for many tribal people. 18-year-old Niamat Khan usually assists the truckers, but he hasn't had work or pay for the last two weeks. He says he misses his family. I broke my cell phone yesterday because my mother called me and only asked for money for house expenses. But I do not have a penny these days. Nobody lends me more money. NATO supplies are the only hope and source of income for me and my family. I have a lot of tension as my family members are ill and they need money. Therefore, I joined this music gathering at night to forget my tension and grief. About 20 feet away from the gathering, there's another group of people sitting on the side of the main road. Eight people play cards and make jokes near the oil tankers. They're the drivers and the owners of the trucks. 20-year-old Norshed Khan just woke up. He needs to keep an eye on his oil tanker as people steal items at night. Although he says that carrying supplies to NATO forces is a sin, he also needs to make a living. My mother knows how risky and dangerous our duty is. She does not eat anything till we come back from Afghanistan, and she constantly calls us on our cell phones. She prays for our safe journey all the time. She has a tough life at home while we pass through dangerous roads. Recently, a helper is shot dead in the throat right in front of me. I have seen death many times. Once, a bomb exploded in an oil tanker close to me. I miss all my family, including my mother, all the time. In late November, NATO attacked a Pakistan military check post near the border. 24 soldiers were killed. Pakistan halted NATO supplies to Afghanistan immediately after the attack. The government also ordered the U.S. to vacate one of the air bases. U.S. and NATO officials expressed regret and condolences, but many in Pakistan want more than words. Thousands have protested since the attack, and the government boycotted the Bonn Conference in Germany, where world leaders gathered to discuss the future of Afghanistan. Brigadier Mahmoud Shah is the former secretary of FATA and a well-known security analyst. He says that transporters carry supplies and oil only for money. He says Pakistan has not taken action on U.S. drone attacks because the tribal region continues to be a refuge for foreign militants. Pakistan will restore the supply line only if NATO will guarantee that NATO forces will take care of territorial integrity of Pakistan, will take care of the rules of engagement, that NATO airplanes will be five miles away from Pakistan military checkposts. If they cross limits, then Pakistan military can target the airplanes and NATO will pay a tax in advance to Pakistan as per international rules and regulations. Besides all these, both countries will share intelligence on an equal basis and the United States will give complete details regarding CIA members and what is their aim while living in Pakistan. The NATO supply line shutdown has revealed just how dependent the country is on the U.S. war. 
The main NATO supply road used to be a trade route, even during the Russian invasion. But now, carrying NATO supplies is the main source of income for many people in the tribal areas. And it's dangerous, says radio journalist Farhad Shinwari. Initial Taliban militants only targeted trucks which carry NATO supplies, but recently the militants have started killing drivers and helpers. The militants target their houses with bombs. Security will remain an important issue for the poor people, even if the NATO supplies would restart, because it is a long route and the security personnel in the tribal area are not competent enough to provide security. In Karachi, another day passes with helpers and drivers waiting for the NATO convoy to resume. The transporters are irritated with having idle days. But at night, they find some enjoyment with music. 22-year-old Kadrat Ula says he doesn't want to miss any music night in Karachi because once the supply route opens, the music ends. Drivers, fearing reprisals from Taliban militants, don't play music inside their trucks. I think of the day when we crossed the Pakistan border and an oil tanker was hit. A helper sitting on top of the oil tanker was killed while the driver escaped. Every oil tanker helper has fear in mind and heart. But despite the danger and fear, we do the duty because it is our profession and it is the profession of our forefathers. Reading for Gabe Matthews in Karachi, I'm Catherine Comp, FSRN.